Thank you, uh, Giuseppe. Uh, welcome, welcome all. My name is Peter Campaneers. Uh, I'm with the, the Joint Research Center in, in Ispra, uh, in Italy. It's the, the research part of the European Commission. And uh, I'm, working, uh, I'm working there since uh, six years now again, and um, another three years before in 2008. And that's where I met uh, Giuseppe. And so that's how we, we, we came in, in contact. So um, yeah, nice that you're, you're here. Uh, as Giuseppe told you, um, I'm going to talk about PyGeo. Uh, it's a follow-up of, of the PK tools. The PK tools are working in, in a bash environment. They're written in, in C, uh, C++. Um, but because the... Um, you know, there, uh, there's a number of reasons why um, why we moved to, to to Python and 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 ported the, the code to Python. First of all, um, I also have to uh, to acknowledge uh, the, the co-author of PyGeo. Uh, there are actually two. There's um, uh, Pierre Swal also working at the Commission. He was working on uh, on his own uh, library also written in C, and this is called MIA-LIP, and it's for uh, morphological uh, image processing. And uh, then there is also uh, Ondra. Ondra was a visiting uh, scientist at, uh, at the Joint Research Center as well. He's um, from Czech Republic, and he was helping with the interfacing uh, with Python. Uh, I've I'm going to go quite quickly through these uh, slides. Uh, this is here. It's described how you can install. We'll do it a bit differently um, in uh, here in this course. I've prepared uh, a script. Uh, there was something um, not working, but I will guide you through the process. I just have to um, to, to do some manual uh, tweak, but uh, I'll, I'll I'll do that with you. Um, there's also a Docker container or a Docker image I prepared. So those of you who want to, to use a Docker are familiar with Docker, of, or maybe some are, are, you, are Mac users and they don't want a, a VM uh, machine, uh, you can also use a, a Docker environment. Um, yeah, I'm going to skip this for now. Um, just to mention that there is a, a documentation uh, quite extensive documentation available. Uh, you will find it uh, when when uh, you open the the slides. Uh, this this online uh, documentation is is clickable. So if you click on that, you will go to the to the docu online documentation. There's also a, a documentation inline. So if you are in a Python environment, you can you can just write help uh, as as I've written here. And, and you will get the, the help information in line. Maybe just um, a, to have an, an idea of, of your knowledge and, and what you're familiar with and how you're using uh, uh, computers in your, in your daily um, scientific life. How many of you are already programming in Python or are familiar with Python? Okay, not so many. I mean, they, they've been using it through their the two models. Uh-huh. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's optimistic. Okay, that's good. Now it is so <laughs> Okay, but yeah. it's 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 not a problem. It's not re really required. It it helps. Um also I would recommend uh to use Python. It's a, it's very flexible. Um I'm I'm a C plus plus programmer myself uh, as a background more or less. Um so uh, for me, it was also new, but I must say that um, using it now for six years, I'm, I'm quite convinced. And especially for, um, let's say, if you're a bit new into programming, I would definitely recommend starting with, with Python. There's a, a wealth of information of, of libraries. Um, also the, the community, uh, the support you find there, it's, it's amazing. So I, I can only recommend. Um, Oh, I think we, yeah, I'll, I'll go more in detail once we are in, in the exercises. Uh, but I think it's, it's also important to, 
to grasp the idea about the data model um, we're using in, in, in PyJL. The, there is um, we, what we call the, a, a data cube. If you open a two-dimensional image, um, it is just one, one plane, uh, one, um, one raster data, and you, the two dimensions here are in X and in Y. Um, we extended that in, in, in two ways. First of all, to have a three-dimensional image, which is like a volume or a cube, so that you have uh, not only your 2D image, but you can have a third dimension. And that third dimension can be either a spectral dimension, if you have several bands, or it can also be a temporal dimension. On top of that, um, so, so that third dimension we call planes. You have on top of that, extra bands. So we have a duplication of each. You can have several data cubes as several bands. And you don't have to have a cube. You can also have a single uh, raster image in a, as a single plane. When you, for example, open a, a, a GeoTIFF image with three bands, as a default, PyJo will open it as a two-dimensional image, but with three different bands. Well, what you see here on the slide is you have uh, you would have one plane, so one, not a three-dimensional cube as here, but one image here in 2D, and then another image as a different band. And you would have three of those if you open a three-band image. It can also be that you have a, several spectral bands of a 3D cube. For instance, if you have a temp in the I use opening it, um, it in a temporal domain, you have several times you have an acquisition of, let's say, a sentinel uh, image with several bands, and you open it with several in, in several uh, temporal acquisitions. So one has been acquired yesterday uh, and, and, and the next today, so that you have two temporal uh, images. And you can all have those into this uh, three-dimensional data cube as one gym object. The same is true if you open a NetCDF uh, file in a NetCDF uh, format, you can have all this uh, multi-dimensional cube directly loaded or stored as a file. It's not that easy for GLT files, but in NetCDF, you can do that. Maybe some of you are already familiar with NetCDF, just as a, as a background. Um, so each band represents a 3D contiguous array in memory. Why is that important, contiguous array in memory? Because um, what I try to do in, in this library is to make bridges to other, other libraries. And this was one of the, uh, of the reasons why I wanted to go to Python, because there's so many libraries available um, that I wanted to link up the, the library um, I made to those others so that you can interchange any type of functions with those. Uh, whereas with PK tools, it's, um, everything is fixed and you just have the tools available uh, that are already um, created for you. And if you want to link that to other libraries, you have to first store your image on disk and then open it uh, from disk into memory just to be able to use the other libraries. This is no longer needed uh, using PyJL. Uh, as I mentioned, planes are typically used for temporal, spectral, or volumetric, uh, volumetric data. And a data cube is defined in a single spatial reference system. So one object, one image can be three-dimensional or several uh, uh, spectral, contain several spectral bands, but it has one uh, spatial reference system. Uh, then there's also a data model for vector data. Uh, we go also in that uh, a bit more in detail uh, during these exercises. Um, and then uh, let's, uh, yeah, let's go through some example. Um, when you want to open an image, uh, you just, you first import the, the PyJL uh, module uh, using import pygeo, and then mostly we do import uh, pygeo as pyj, and then you can use all the functions 
um, in PyJO with the uh, prescript PyJ dots. And for example, to create a data cube, you just say PyJ dot Jim. Jim is the Jim is this uh, raster data object, and then in brackets the name of your, for example, your GeoTIFF file. From that moment, you have a Jim object on which you can do uh, many things. Any any questions so far? So I. Uh, I realize that for those of you who are new to Python, this might be a bit overwhelming, but, um, but let's see to uh, a bit more detail when, when we go into it. Yes, please. No, that's the, the whole idea and the, the advantage uh, and why I was, was creating this in the first place because I want I don't want this burden of each time loading and, and working with uh, with the uh, geospatial coordinates because otherwise um, you probably are familiar or those of you familiar with Python you can just use NumPy arrays NumPy arrays are perfect for doing uh, geospatial analysis or let's say uh, image uh, analysis but what they fail to have is this uh, geometric information and so here what uh, what we do is we make the link to NumPy, uh, NumPy uh, arrays, we can use all the function of, of NumPy, but in the meantime, we always make sure that this uh, geospatial uh, information is, is contained and also is consistent. So for example, if we crop an image, you can also crop it in NumPy, but then you will lose the geospatial information. If we crop it here, we make sure that the geospatial uh, information is still correct. Yes, please. It that's a good question. This is, is only in memory. Okay. So this is an object, uh, 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 like a class, a PyGeo class, and you instantiate it as an object, and from that moment you work it with it as an object. Nothing is kept on disk here. We 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 only uh, working in memory here. And this is also a big difference with uh, PK tools. PK tools, it was designed, as Giuseppe said, 20 years ago with a total different mindset. And there it was uh, designed to minimize the, the memory footprint because memory was scarce. And so I was using, uh, I was loading the image line per line and then pr uh, processing it line per line. Now with the, the memory we have available in, in, in modern computers, it's much faster to work directly in memory and we don't need it anymore. Still, there's a mechanism to, to do a tiling inherently in, in, the, uh, in the object, uh, but that's, that's maybe also for later, if in case it would not fit into memory. But um, for most of our applications, it will still fill in, uh, fit in memory and then it's just much faster. Um, Okay, this is a bit too detailed for now. Um, it's just to mention that we are working with these two different concepts of bands and planes, but uh, let me just skip this for now. Um, this is an example here of how to bridge this gym object to other uh, libraries like NumPy or what, as you mentioned, uh, X-Ray. Um, once you have a gym object, as you see here, though gym equals, uh, sorry, gym, um, uh, so, sorry, to, uh, I start, on, start over. If you have a NumPy array and you want to use the PyGeo library, uh, you can create a gym object from the NumPy by doing, by calling pj.np2gym and then giving your NumPy array as an argument. Of course, as you were mentioning, the NumPy array doesn't know anything about geospatial information. So PyGeo at this moment would not know either. So here um, you would, and, and there are mechanisms for that, you would have to add this information to the gym in order to, to, to be a real gym with all the, the geospatial information in it. Um, there's uh, uh, this is uh, a bit too detailed 
for now. Um, let me keep this for later or for your, uh, you can read it afterwards. Um, I wanted to continue here uh, with this geospatial information. So if we say, uh, Jim, we create a Jim object from a NumPy array, uh, we need to set two things to, in order to make it a real geospatial object. That is to set the geotransform and to set the projection. What are those for those of you not familiar? The geotransform contains the information of the upper left corner, where is this image located on Earth? And it contains the, uh, the width and the height of the pixel, so the spatial resolution. In the image, it knows already how much columns and rows there are. So with all this information, it knows exactly where on, the on Earth this would be located if you also provide a projection, because you also need to know if this is in a UTM or in a, a European uh, projection or if, if this is lat long. So these two information you need to know, and you can set it either manually like this, if you know all this information, or you can also use, if you have, for example, another image where you know, I know that the other image has the same projection and the same transform as I want to impose on this new gym object I created, you can just get the geotransform and get the projection of that other gym image, and then you can impose it on the other one with those set geotransforms. Okay. Uh, it's a, it's a, over there, you have six parameters you call four are the four then. Yeah. The two, maybe it's a yeah, one, one is also the uh, a rotation, but it, in, in our use, it will always be zero. Uh, so there's there's two for the spatial dimension one in x one in y and what, uh, two on the on the upper left corner x and y and then two zeros. Um, that I just uh, took this from from the GDAL um, uh, uh, terminology and and also I'm using the same. So if you want to know what which one is is which, you just uh, check it either in the in, in, in the help information of PyGeo, but also you can look in on uh, on GDAL. It's it's exactly the the same terminology I'm, I'm using there. Um, here is an example uh, to show you how we can use other libraries and and just use it. To uh, and, and as a, to combine it with with uh, with PyGeo. So here, uh, this is this is an example. So you import the other library in which you are interested. So a, a multi-dimensional image from SciPy, uh, which uses also uh, NumPy arrays, and that's the nice thing. I only made have to make sure that my data model is compatible with NumPy's, and once that is done. I can use all these other libraries, which are also used by. And the same is true for X-Ray. I can also use X-Ray because I'm using this contiguous information in, in memory. Um, so what you do, suppose you have a gym object where the gym object, you have to see it as an object that con contains data and some metadata. The data itself is, the, um, is one aspect, the metadata with all the geospatial information is another. And we can um, access the data in NumPy format in this way. We use just say my gym object, it has some data and I access the data in NumPy, in a NumPy representation. And then I say, I, I want to access all the values in it. And that is this, um, these brackets with the with the colon. It, it, so sorry, sorry for those not familiar. But if you are familiar with NumPy, and so if you're more into, you will more be more into Python. You will you will uh, um, appreciate it better. But let's for now assume that I want to access my data from Jim. I want it as a NumPy representation, and I want to replace each individual pixel of that NumPy representation of that data. So I will just impose data within the heart of that gym object. And I do it in this way. And I can, from that moment, I can use 
the, the, the library I imported do, for example, a Gaussian filter or whatever type of function there is available. And this function asks for data as well in NumPy format. So I give my gym object data in a NumPy array format. And this is then the sigma for my Gaussian filter, the normal uh, uh, you look at the documentation of, of your uh, ND image from SciPy and then what it will do, this will create a Gaussian filter version of my gym object and I will, will just replace it in my gym. So this is quite efficient without too much memory copies because it will just ingest it in the gym object. Uh, you could also create a new gym here or a new numpy array, but this is quite a, a dense format without too much of a, a memory copy. You will just replace the image um, in, in place of, of your, uh, the data in, in your image. And once you know that this is possible, there's a whole world now open for all the other libraries. And so this is one of the main reasons why, why I wanted to, to, to bridge uh, PyJet to, to, uh, to NumPy so that we, we have this, this uh, available. Does PyJet apply to all planes and all bands? Uh, that's a, a very good question. Um, there are uh, inherently it will uh, apply to all planes if this one, if this is also a three dimensional uh, uh, function. So here with this, I will, uh, I will provide the, the NumPy 3D image as a single band. So if you, um, so we have this, we can have multiple cubes in one gym object. Uh, and this will only refer to one cube, not in the multi-band, multi, uh, uh, because if we want to access other bands, I have to provide the band number here. And then I have the, the cube, the NumPy array of one specific, on, of another band. So for now, um, let's assume for here, we have just a 3D NumPy array in that data model, and then it will apply to the same 3D. If this is just a 2D function, you have to make sure that you also you provide a 2D. If this work, if this is this function of your library is working on 3D, we can also re this will also replace the 3D image uh, in the gym. Um, but as as NumPy doesn't have the concept of the multi bands, only of the 3D image. The, uh, the multi bands you can uh, you can access a different band by providing a number here. Um, that's something on uh, also we have the same uh, uh, concept on vectors. So uh, I'm working for vector data. I'm I'm very much as for raster data as well, but I'm very much relying on, on the GDAL library, which is one of the, uh, the let's say the, the core uh, libraries uh, available for, on, on which many other libraries are, are, are based. And uh, for vector data, we can export similar to exporting it to NumPy. We can either export it as NumPy, but also as a dictionary, or as also as a as a pandas object, um, so there's a, and there again, once you do it, uh, you uh, a dictionary or a pandas. If it's not the geo pandas, it doesn't have the concept of this geospatial information. So you will lose by converting. You will lose the geospatial information, but you will have an array or you will have an object in Python to which you can do many things like uh, plotting or. Uh, uh, putting in a database or whatever. What is this upgrade? I just close. Okay. Um, so that's for pandas and geo pandas. Let me skip this for now. Uh, yeah. Some some conclusions before we go to the exercises and first of all uh, to to install. Um, so PyGeo has been released under a GPL version three license as open source. Uh, the documentation is available online and inline. So also in your Python environment, if you're not connected to the internet, you just have the, the, the documentation also inline in your Python. Um, and um, we will, I think we will see a brief example of how to tile, uh, so that about the tiling mechanism, and, uh, if you want to upscale 
or you, you, you want to reduce your memory fit footprint if you want to, uh, to work uh, with the entire globe in a, in a very uh, detailed uh, spatial resolution that cannot fit the memory, how, how, how to solve that? Uh, Peter, one question. Yes. Uh, similarity between and difference between uh, IG and uh, Stereo? Um, not so many uh, similarities. Um, no, I, I don't think there is, there's, re I mean, both are relying on, on GDAO to some extent, so there are some similarities, of course. Um, there might be some uh, some things you I've, I've never tried really to to compare or to uh, to use um, those functions from raster IO in uh, to combine with PyGL uh, with one ex exception I was but, but it, it, it goes beyond really PyGL. It's because I, uh, when I use, um, I, I think it was quite efficient. In, uh, it's quite efficient, raster IO, in, in warping. So if I wanted to, to warp a cube, I was using raster IO and then converting it back into a gene object. But, um, but it's only, yeah, that's the only case where I was using uh, raster IO. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Yes. Um, as, as I mentioned, I, I think with the, if, as long as the operations you want to do, if, if, they, if they are pixel based or they are not relying on neighboring pixels, or if they are, you can, you can work with overlaps. Um, I, would, I would tile the image as, as I'm doing all the time because I'm, I'm, I'm working a lot with, with Sentinel uh, images. And, and, and working with those tiles. And um, for me, tiling has a huge benefit of, uh, of working on a cluster. And, and, and so I can just tile the image, provide the different tiles to the different uh, processing uh, cores in our cluster. So that's one big advantage that I win a lot by only uh, by by parallel uh, distributing those um, uh, processes, and in the meantime limiting the memory footprint for each of the tiles, and, and then I just see how how much I have to tile uh, in order to to make it fit in the either to fit in memory or to see how many core cores we have available. Um, at the GRC, I'm, I'm often using the, the cluster where we have often more than 1,000 cores available. So it's much faster for me, even I would, I would not have to do it to, to tile the image. It's much faster for me to tile it into 1,000 and then distribute it, process all the 1,000 tiles and then aggregate it uh, back. In. But of course, if you are... Uh, working with, with a segmentation technique and you want to have the full image uh, processed, but then you run into problems anyhow with also other techniques you cannot put the, the image in memory either. So for example, PK tools was not able to, to do that either because I was working it also in some kind of a tiled system. I was working line for line. But what I uh, realized is that it was highly so inefficient doing this line for line um, when you were working specifically with those Sentinel images, because they are in a JPEG 2000 format, and JPEG 2000 works with blocks of the compression, and if in order to access one pixel, it needs to 
uncompress a whole block. And if you have to do that in a fix in a, in a row based system, and you go from one row to uh, from from one row to the other, the other but you go in, uh, in uh, column wise, the, by the time you you go a, until a few columns further, you already have to uncompress a new block. And so this is really inefficient if you if you do it in that way. And whereas if you can fit it in memory, even if it's a quarter or, or a sixteenth of the image, it's much more efficient because you can decompress that block and in, in immediately work with that uh, rather than having to decompress a whole block if you're going pixel by pixel to the to the line. Okay, so um, let's now uh, try to compile. Uh, this is still visible. Let's go to um, did all of you pull the the SE data from from the GitHub, and do you see that there is a new directory in let's see there's let's search here um no you go to lectures and then pygeo you see that yeah when you've done the r sync you go to that directory of your r sync And then you see that there is a new file uh, in PyGeo. There's a file in PyGeo which is called install pygeo.shell. And what I would like you to do is type sudo bash install that so that file. We will which will do the installation by getting the necessary libraries from GitHub. From the open source uh, sources itself uh, and install them. As I mentioned, there is a, a little tweak we have to do, uh, and that is some manual um, intervention uh, at the end of this process because, at, for some reason, there is one of the, uh, the things that do fail, but we can. I'll have to find out, but uh, I think it's faster for now if we just do the manual thing. Okay. So the sudo and the dot 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 uh -huh. Is there a way to install it via Conda? Um, probably. Um, I'm not a Conda expert. Uh, I think. If you have all the dependencies, uh, it should be possible. The only thing is you need to do also a compilation as uh, one of the dependencies of, of, uh, of PyGeo are two C++ libraries. And so you need to figure out how to do that compilation, com um, compilation in, uh, in, in Conda. So, it's something so I need. probably not, <laughs> let's say. Well, yeah, maybe not so <laughs> on the. Not how we are used it from Conda, at least. Yeah, what, what I do uh, sometimes, um, and, and that's for users of the GRC who are, um, who don't want to do a compilation because in our system on, in, in the cloud, we provide 
is all the, the C++ libraries that are needed are available, but, and, and those are not the ones that are consistently uh, updated. Uh, but for example, if I have a new Python version of PyGeo, the Py and then you can install that in a virtual, in a virtual environment. Uh, and that's something we often do, but in the, in the Conda environment, it, this is something I need to, uh, to get into and to make available. Thanks. And by, by this, if, if there's any one of you who are uh, into uh, creating Conda packages and are willing to help, I'm, I'm also very interested. I don't remember, but is there any snapshot of my video in the report? Where in? In the new UIS. Uh, it, not, not yet. Um, there's something I would like to discuss also with you because for, Pi, uh, for PK2s there is, and I would very much like it to uh, to have it for for PyGeo as well because it would make life much more easier indeed for uh, also for us. And, um, let's go. Oh, is it finished maybe already? Up. So uh, here's the command again, and so most likely it has stopped with some error. And so what we will do. Uh, is it still running for you? So it's, I'll, I'll, I'll wait a bit. If you stop, we know which kind of error we have set. Such or less. Let me, well, I think it, I will have it, although it seemed that it was continued, probably it, I have the same error message here as well. Let me check. Ah, maybe not because it was already, I did manually, I solved it manually, but it's in the Jiplip compilation there should be some error. And so we will. Uh, can I increase the size here? Why? Uh, yeah, but probably above. I don't know. But can I? Uh, can I have not, not many I think it's only the, the error is probably it's only for the person who sees. Um, is there someone who has the error? Who's, who's working on the virtual machine? Is it finished in that probably in that process as well? Yeah, yeah, that's probably the error. Ah, okay. Yeah, that. We can do yeah. uh, what about the, the, the compilation? Yeah. The install is not. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah, I don't have the error here, but it should you should you should have when you scroll up, you would see some error with CC. It's it's the 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 C uh, compilation in it's shown in red. And so what we will do is just to to do that compilation again manually by going to this directory here. Uh, can I? Make it a bit bigger, maybe the, uh, the property. Yeah, good preference. Control. Oh, bro, try. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Good. And then I'll try. Now I need to. Is it visible? Yeah, better. Okay, so you go into this directory and you do 
pseudo make. And that worked for me um, in the in the virtual machine as well. So it's it's quite I'm, it's exactly the same as what is done what should be done in the in the script. But here I do it manually, then it works. So I, I don't have an explanation for it. Yeah, yeah. Well, for those, yeah, especially for those who, who are uh, working in the uh, the live OSG live, for those who have installed the system on their on their computers, probably it will work already from the first time. Mine will be fast because it still has, has the. Yeah, yeah. The making style the. Sorry? The, 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 path. The, the path is this one. So, and then after the make, we have some working but no problem. Yeah, the word is on the Okay, perfect. And then you do sudo make install. Okay, yeah. Oh, so let me do this. You can also write sudo main and sudo make install. So I know you are all uh, bash experts after the uh, the nice courses of uh, of Giuseppe. So you know exactly what what this is doing. Also, might be this is just you can you can also have the the, the semicolon here, which says I want to execute this command, and then I want to execute this command. So it would also be possible with a column or a semicolon, sorry. What is the difference if you put two ampersands here instead of the semicolon? Correct, very well. So this will only be executed if this there was no error here. Well done, Giuseppe. And the, and the pseudo main compiling the C code, but the sudo make install is transfer, transfer the compile the binary file from that directory to the, the system. To the system. Okay. These are very useful, especially when you, you are struggling with no, some, some brass alone. Yeah, sorry, the control C, don't, don't look at that. <laughs> Then it will skip this one, even uh, it will try to do this again, but it will see that this was done already and it can do the next necessary step. So we repeat again. You re not this, so you repeat the install shell, uh, the bash install. The bash install, yes. Okay. The one with the previous step, with the one with 
which take here. Yeah. Yes. So go back to the reaction. Do you need this? Um, can I remove this, or is someone still needing this on screen? So here you have the uh, the manual command, which you had to do if you had some problems. And here you have the original one that failed initially, but which should now work if you have done this manually. And how do you get this work? Okay. Um, first of all, the last line you see, what is it? Okay, it seems fine. Now we will move to the limit as it says. Yes, okay, okay, okay. Okay, this is the original letter. So you can. That's okay. Yeah, it's twice on the left side, not the same side. Okay, because uh, it's. This is the original error, the same as uh, the beginning. Uh, uh, the uh, no. Yeah, so maybe it's the higher fraction mm -hmm. because of memory. Yeah, like I can see that. Yeah, I don't know. I can see it. So it won't be. Can we hold it? Yeah, it's pretty complicated. We can do a test by writing Python three minus C import PyGeo uh, PyGeo dot Jim. Sorry, as the PyGeo. If this is not providing any error, we are done. So let me just. Or another one would also be print new dot version. Can we end one of these two commands? And it gives it doesn't give an error so far. How are we doing online? Is there um from the the participants online? Is it is it all working? Sebastian, are you there? Yeah. 
Yes, uh, I'm sorry. I'm not um, actively participating in the coding today. I'm just listening. Okay. Uh, is because there any I, I really have no problems with, with uh, installing and compiling. I don't think there is. But sorry, you were heading on to the other ones. Okay, in any case, if there's any problem, just, just let us know. Uh, Thanks. In, in, this, in this room, uh, how many of you can enter this command without problems? One, two, you can as well. Yeah, without errors? Yeah. Yes, without errors. Who has, who has an error? One. Uh, it's, it's two underscores, two underscores. Okay, perfect. Uh, mine, there are two underscores before version and after version. Okay, so probably this is because the check the Okay, and then we do the So Five, six, eight. 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 Five, six
Is it the Python part? No, it's uh, I think so. The Python part. Okay, so we can uh, we can check each. So can we go back to the previous uh, environment? So, so your in case environment. Uh, yes, that's the that's something what works. Okay, let's, let's try to set it because you need to install by sudo. Yeah, and that's probably installed some before the uh, system for root uh, 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 Yeah, you can use for your view. But yeah, yeah there's some, 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 some settings that you can use. <laughs> To, to, to narrate the system. Exactly. So, why is it working there? Because there, uh, the, 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 the environment, the virtual environment was created by still inheriting inheriting from the system. From the system. So, you are, you are using both. You are using both. Yes. And the environment. So, what we can do here is to the installation of the PyGeo with, with manually. Uh, uh, with the user installing. There's, there's, there's some settings that you can use in the environment. Uh, so that they are created uh, 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 so we hear it from system. If I go remember, if I can, if, uh, if I just do the setup install, in the environment. Mm -hmm. Here. But I need uh, to find here. Uh, um, uh, so I need to Uh, 
So what we'll go through a number of very simple examples. Um, what I, uh, first, I'll tell you what the, the planning is. Um, what I wanted to do is now to see how we can do some very simple things in PyGL, opening an image, uh, accessing some of the, of the data and so forth. So that you get an idea of how it works. And then the, the next part was I prepared a notebook that is doing exactly the same as Giuseppe was showing with PK tools. So you get a, a feeling of what the differences are uh, and how you can do similar things. So if you have some of you have already experienced with PK tools and know how things are done in that environment, you see how it is done in PyGeo and what are the maybe the disadvantages or some of the advantages uh, for both packages, okay? So uh, let's start with a uh, Jupyter lab, and we can do that by going to the exercises. So I want you to go to this directory, you see that? Okay. 
And then you can enter Jupyter Lab space and then the file PyJO introduction.ipy notebook. Please all, always try to use the tab key as uh, Giuseppe has told you, I'm sure, so that you don't write any errors when you, when you type this in. Are you so far? Can I can I enter this command? Is it fine for everyone? You need to see this still. So this this is starting the Jupyter environment in your browser. Who of you is not familiar with Jupiter? No, we use Dom. Yeah? We use the whole class. Okay. So the nice thing about Jupyter Notebooks is that you can write some markdown uh, as Giuseppe has uh, shown you. And so it's, it's very uh, interesting for, for doing courses. Um, you all know how to execute cells by either controls or shift enter. If you do shift enter, you will go automatically go to the next cell. So um, a few words here of a bit of explanation. Here, I'm importing some libraries. So this is um, in Python, the typical thing you do, you either import a library or you import a part of a library. Some, part, some libraries are very vast, extensive, and you can also, from, from the path lib package, I'm only interested here in using path. So I don't want to import the, the entire package and, and, and increase my memory footprint, uh, for example, and I only do this. But as you see, I'm not doing it all the time. For NumPy, I want every function available from NumPy. So I say just import NumPy as NP and from Pandas as well, or I'm too lazy to, to search what I'm actually looking for. And I say, just import everything. Um, Matplotlib inline is a, is a command you have to put if you want to show images inline in your Jupyter Notebook environment. Otherwise, it will not work. So this line you will need for that. And from this Matplotlib library, we will import the PyPlot uh, class. And then the final one is PyJail. So I hope this is all executing for those at least uh, for the, where the, these two commands were working. This should also be working. Okay. Okay, so let's start uh, by opening the first image as a, as a PyJ object. This is all visible also for the ones in the back and, and you have it also, but you have it open on your, on your screen, right? So what we're doing here is we just create a gym image by opening this raster file. And from this moment, we have a gym. We can inspect this object by, for example, showing the number of columns. So we see that there are 720 columns and we show that there is a single, it's a single band image. If you would have a multi-band GeoTIFF, you would see here that there would be more bands. So here now we, still, we see it's only a single band. We can do the same for the planes. This is also a single plane image. We only have one plane, right? So we have a single band and a single plane, just a two dimensional image. And what is interesting here now, we see that there's also a projection by opening the TIFF image, all the GeoF information is already um, part of the object. It's, it's already here. And we see here the GL transform. What are those numbers? 29 is the upper left 
coordinate of the upper left image, uh, pixel, sorry. This one is the spatial resolution in X. This is the rotation. So it will, as I mentioned before, it will always be zero in our purpose. So you can, you can rotate the images and this, this, this will be a rotation. Yes, indeed. Yes, those are these. Yeah. Uh, this is the upper left corner, the Y coordinate of the upper left corner, the rotation for, uh, for, the, for the Y, and then the spatial resolution in Y. You see that there's a minus here. Is that, that might be surprising for some. Does anyone know why there's a minus here for the spatial resolution in Y? Why isn't it just as for X 0 0.008? Exactly. In the, as a convention, we start from the upper left image, but the Y is decreasing in that direction. The X is increasing in that direction, but the Y is decreasing. And just to make sure that we are to, uh, everyone knows about this convention, you see here that this DY is, in, is, is minus, okay? Um, we immediately start here by bridging to NumPy. So here you can see already that you can access the real data inside our gym object by saying gym.np, sorry, gym.np, and this is the content of the data. It's, of course, it's not a full content, so that's why here there are three dots, but you, you can already inspect the data as you would normally do with a NumPy array by just saying gym.np, and this is the content. This is the upper left pixel uh, value, okay? And you will see here that this is just the this is just a numpy and the array. From here, we don't have any geospatial information. Just this, this is just a numpy array. Okay. We can work with um, in a what they call a Pythonic way. So as those of you who are working normally in Python, as with numpy arrays. This, although Jim, the Jim object is itself is not a NumPy array, but you can use similar things. I've tried to be as compatible as possible because it's so intuitive for Python programmers to access the data in the Jim object as you would normally do. The only difference is here that it, it works on a Python Jim object and we will still keep the geo coordinates information. So what we do here with zero dot uh, column three comma zero dot uh, column three is that the first index corresponds to Y and the second to X. With a zero column three, you want to address the first three rows and with a zero dot three in the after the column, first three columns. If we would have a three dimensional image, we could access the third dimension as a first index. And you would say, for example, zero for the first plane or zero column three for the first three planes, the first three rows and the first three columns. It's very similar to what you would normally do with an umpire array. So this one here, it doesn't, be, it doesn't show me as I would do with a NumPy array, it doesn't show me the content. It just gives me the, it says what I return is a PyGeo gym object. But if I want to show the content, we know how to do that. We would just say this one dot NP. So we access the actual data inside this one, not the full data of the gym, but just the data of this part as a NumPy, expressed as a NumPy array, and we see the three by three here, okay? But to show you also that we haven't lost anything from our geospatial information, 
the bound, we can get the bounding box of the geospatial bounding box of this part only. And we would see that this is not the same as the bounding box of, if you would put this. So here, this is bounding box of only the first three by three cells. Okay. Similar to what we call in Python the get items, here it will return a new array or new Python uh, JIM object, but we can also set those values by assigning some value to it. So what we do here is we assign, we, we, we get access to this four, first three rows and columns and we put them all equal to zero. So this is a very efficient and, and, and straightforward intuitive way just by accessing my pixel data and assigning a value in a Pythonic way. Let's say. And we can show it, for example, we show the first five and rows and columns in this way in a, with an, in a NumPy representation. And we see that those first three have been assigned to zero. And these are the original pixel values. Is that clear? Um, we can also, uh, thanks to what we get in return by just making sure that my data model is this is can be interpreted or can I can uh, export this data model and bridge to NumPy arrays, we can all use all the functionalities, not only the functionalities for the libraries, but also for displaying. So we can easily display a, a raster image data by using the matplotlib, which is already act, uh, capable of displaying NumPy arrays. So we do that in this way, we say, this is the normal uh, way uh, matplotlib is working. We say we define a figure, we add a subplot to it, uh, a single, a single Im uh, image. So we could have several rows and columns of images by putting that in, in, in these variables here. We show the image, which image to show the gym object. We cannot give a gym object because matplotlib doesn't know about gym, but we can give a numpy array. It can work with numpy arrays. So we say gym.np and then we show the image. It's a bit strange, these colors. Why is that? Because when we see there's another, uh, if you go to the, the help information of Jim of uh, PyJO, you would see all the modules that are available. But one of those modules, what you might remember from PK Tools, PK Stat, here we have made it in a, in a sub module stats, and it's just get stats. If you go to the, the help information, you see there's a numerous ways of, of, of getting statistics, the same options as for uh, PK Tools, they can have uh history histograms and all these things but just without any information it will give you basic information like the minimum the maximum and the mean and what you see is that in the image that giuseppe provided it has quite a, a, a very low number as what you would call it maybe a no data you want to see there's no date but it's it's a it's quite a uh, a large or negative number and this is the reason why matplotlib has problems of showing it. It cannot stretch it very well. So, uh, so you see also calculating the mean. If we would do here get stats and then make, for example, if I would say I'm only interested, I say source min equals zero, which means I only interested in the positive values and I get rid of those large negative values then I get some real values here that are interesting to me. The minimum is Z0, the maximum is 7.5, and, and the mean value is 2.95. So this also the same as in PK tools, you have source minus, or you can also have a no data value, but you can put this information here and you get immediately the, the information there. And we can also, this is a bit, uh, go a bit uh, more advanced maybe, but maybe, but, um, what we do here is exactly the same as above, but you can already have a, a feeling of what is possible with this, uh, with, uh, with PyJO. And we say, I want to show the gym.np as before, but what I'm doing here, I say, I want my gym object, but I'm only interested in, the, in those pixels where gym is greater than zero, because this is providing me, there's several things going on behind the scenes. 
if I write this here, GIMP equal, uh, bigger than zero, it does not give me a Boolean like yes or no or true or false. It will give me a new array, a new GIMP object with ones where the pixel values are bigger than zero and zeros where the pixel values are smaller than zero. This is an array or a GIMP object, a, a new image of only those where the, the pixel values are one, where Jim is greater than zero. And it, by providing this as an argument, as we had before in zero to three or zero to three, it gives me a new Jim object with only the positive values. And where they were negative, I put them to zero. So this is quite a cryptic way of writing. And um, those of you who are working all the time with NumPy arrays, you are, this would be quite, easy to understand, but for if it, it can be a bit overwhelming, I, I admit, if, if you see this as a first time, but just, just to see, and I could make write this in several lines where it would be more um, acceptable uh, for, for some, um, but this already shows you what you can do. And then if you just execute this cell, it takes a little longer because there's, as I said, there's a lot of processing already behind the scenes, but here we see a nicer image than the previous one, because now all the, the negative, the, the large negative values have just put to zero. What do you mean with? Ah, this one here though, yeah, it is possible, but it's, the thing is, uh, we are not in, in a GIS, uh, environment here, so you can uh, you you would have to use different libraries for that. This is a simple matplotlib. It only works with NumPy arrays, and as I mentioned, NumPy doesn't have a clue about geospatial information. So then you would need more geospatial visualization uh, tools, and not just uh, matplotlib. So th this was not the idea of, of here. I wanted to just uh, I'm, if I'm prototyping, I just want to see the in, the image, and I'm not for now interested in the in the geospatial information here. Okay. Yeah, probably Rastelio. No, Rastelio. There is some. Um, uh, there, there is. Um, uh, there is iPy leaflet, uh, which which is doing doing that. They're much more uh, capable of showing showing it. Yeah. You need a local class yeah. So it's, it's, it's a bit more complicated. Uh, okay. okay, so um, I would, uh, any questions now on, on this part here? So this was, uh, I, I, don't, I don't have the time to go to more examples here. Uh, I, I hope that with this and with the, the documentation that is available that you can, can play with it and, and uh, see all the, list of properties so you have your gym object you can do gym dot properties dot get me all the information you uh, that is available in this in this object with all those uh, functions that are there uh, you have other modules like pixel operations you have modules um, for filtering you have modules for classification you all the all the functions you normally have in ek tools you also have in uh, in pygeo and more uh, because also I merged this other library from uh, from my from my colleague Pierre, who is uh, an expert in, um, in in morphological uh, image uh, processing, and all of his library is also included included here. And on top of the, that, of, of course, all the the libraries that can work with with NumPy, so you can also experiment uh, with those. And now, just as a as a second part, I would like to show to. Um, can I just close this one here? Maybe. So, uh, where is it? <clears throat> PyGeo dot. You have another PyGeo IPython notebook, which is called PyGeo dot IPython notebook. If you Run that.
maybe go, I'm not sure how much time we'll let, we, we can, the idea here is, I'm not going to, uh, if we're not at time, explain every little detail, but I want to, to see that we can do the same things as uh, Giuseppe was showing you with VK tools, okay? Again, we import the libraries we need. And uh, one of the first things uh, you've seen with PK tools is to get masks. Here we get three different masks and we can do the same here with PyJail. And this is the first and the only example here where things run a bit slower in PyJail than in PK tools. In all the other examples, it's faster up to much faster because we're doing it more efficiently in memory here. But you have to also know that uh, behind the scenes, when we do something in PyGeo in a, at a memory level, behind the scenes, there is always a C or C++ code, either because we're calling some NumPy function or behind the scenes, we call the same functions as we had in PK tools implemented in C or C++. But if we are doing something very specific for which PK tools was designed and we have to call a similar thing from here, it, it's first of all, it's, a, it's the same functionality. So it will not run that faster, except that it will run in memory. But if we are doing um, the, the big advantage of PyGeo is that it is much more generic and flexible. Whereas with PK tools, you have one, um, function that has to be that has been designed like this and you cannot alter much or you have to tweak with with the options but if the option is not available i have to start with programming it or maybe giuseppe in the past was saying ah peter i want this option i had to program it and then putting it available again so in, in pygeo this is not needed for most of the cases anymore because you can uh, program it yourself in a python environment and it's only the base functionalities that are implemented in, in C++. And this is what we see here. There is not such a thing as get mask, but what there is, is the Pythonic way of getting mask, but there's quite some things, there's much more going on behind the scenes than a very dedicated function that gets a mask immediately and it goes quite fast. What is happening here, here, if you see, I wanted to get a mask for every pixel between one and two, or between five and eight and zero and 10. And only had to, I had these as options and I only had to go through the image once and just check the, 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 the pixel data and output an image. Here we are doing something similar, but much more, <clears throat> much more than that. But we have to do quite some things. So let's see what, to get a first mask, First of all, I'm opening this image as a gym object. What I'm doing here, here I'm creating a new gym object. And this, as I said, as I, as I said before, I want only those pixels to have values one where my gym pixels are equal or above one. So there's one time we have to go through the image and it returns a new image. This is a similar one. I want a new gym Python object with all the pixels equal to one, where the pixels have been let smaller or equal to two, gives me a second image. I'm combining these two images where both have to be true. So this gives me a new Python image and I store it in a new image. So I have to run through many times um, where it, as I had to do only once here, but of course this is a much more intuitive and, and, and Pythonic way by you can do combine this with as, as many things as, as you want and, 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 and put an or here or an end and, and combine it with another image you had in memory. So there's many things you can do, but uh, there's a drawback and that's, you have to do quite some, 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 some things here. But as it is in memory, still, it is quite fast. Peter, yeah. you have over there about data and your data. Uh, no, that's a good point here. Uh, probably you are not getting zero one, probably, you know? because as I'm only interested in above one and, uh, and below two, I'm not interested in it. It doesn't interest me if I have to, to put no data zero. 
because if if it's zero, it will never be uh, above one. Yeah, but the data become one, no? They, 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 between the one and two. Between. Ah, okay, because it's maximum two. Okay, do the second one. The second one. If it's above five or smaller than eight, no data is no is not entering the, here neither. And the data one is the default become one. Ah, sorry, the data. Yeah, yeah. So here it's zero and one as a default. I can change that by saying I could say times five. Ah, right. right. Then I have five and zero. Okay, get it. Yeah. Here, this will pro this will give me an image with zeros and ones. Zero and one. But if I'm interested in zeros and tens, I can choose to this times ten in a very Pythonic way. Right. Just an image times 10 gives 10 times the values for each of those pixel values. Okay. Um, similar, you, you can apply masks. I did already execute thing, this, I think. Here you can apply masks by doing it in the uh, in, with PK tools. But I can also say the similar, all the pixel values where I had the mask one, where those were all, all these places where I had a one, I want those values to be minus nine. And where they were zero, I want to keep my orig original value. This is this, so this is exactly the same as applying a mask. So I want. On where the mask was one, I want to have a, a, a value minus nine. Where the mask was two, I was, want to have a value minus five. And where the mask was three, I want to have a, mi a value minus 10. Similar as you were doing here. Yeah. Okay. We can combine, we can skip all the previous steps before because this mask one was not nothing else than this here. So we can do it also at once, skipping these in intermediate uh, arrays and reducing a bit the, the memory because once this is not needed anymore, Python will do an, an automatic uh, garbage collection and say, okay, this value is not needed anymore. I'm going to clear that memory. Is this considering uh, no data values or why do you have to write like, like, like values? For these operations, they are not considered. Okay, so no. So you have to think about it, and but you can perfectly do it with these kind of type of combinations. And so all, all of this here happens in memory and there's no intermediate file writing, but suppose this is the final step and you want to keep this information as a real image, not only as the, the, the NumPy array, you want to keep also the geospatial information. You can just say IO for the IO module, write, and then the image path name and whatever creation options you're already using with PK tools, like compress and, and uh, some, some options for the compression. So this, you can put whatever gym object and then do IO write and it will write it into, into a file. Compositing, uh, here we were getting a mask with PK tools doing a composite, uh, or doing a stat profile, uh, we can do similar things. So this was building. Single. Yeah. Okay. I've not called it PK compo. Uh, I've not called it composite. I'm. I've been calling it reduce plane. The thing is. Um, and this is, I'm not going into too much detail here because it will be a bit too long, but I will try to explain more or less what, what is happening. Uh, I'm using the lip path module from Python. The lip path module can work with directories. It can work with directories and also um, wildcards in directories. So what, here, the first number of files gives me all the files with month 0, 1, 2, 3, 2, 9. And the second one is 
uh, zero, uh, 10, 11, 12. This is very similar to what you were using, Bob, in Bash, but here we were doing it in Python. The path lib also provides me a way to loop through these um, files with a wildcard. And that's what I'm doing here. Loop through all these files and create me a gym for each of the files you encounter. So the very first time I'm encountering the file, which will be probably month one, I create a gym object of it and I'm taking advantage as it is the very first one. I saw in your PK tool script that you were interested in creating a mask for the very first thing that you encounter. So here I will also make take advantage of that. I mean this loop by creating this mask using the same file um, as the, the same gym here where gym is greater than zero and smaller than 25, this will be my mask. If I'm not in the very first image, I will create a cube by, I have already my two dimensional raster in my gym, but I say on this gym, stack the same type of object, another gym in a, in a plane dimension, creating a three dimensional image. So after this, I will get a cube with all these files stacked as a, as a data cube. This is what happening here. The stack plane is part of the geometry from, uh, module. I will stack this new file in this loop, stack it to the gym. So I'm stacking a, um, a cube and doing the same for the, for the files starting with 10, 11, 12, 13. Stack them as well. After this loop, I will have created my stack cube containing all these files. And here we are going into what you were asking is this working on a multi dimensional, in, in multi dimension as well? Indeed, it is. I'm creating this, this, although this mask is a two dimensional image only. So I apply a two dimensional image with ones and zero as a mask. I apply it to the entire cube. So it goes to all the temporal dimension and it will mask all individual planes of this data cube and set it to zero. And then as a no data value, then I calculate reduced plane. So I have this whole, maybe some of you are familiar with um, um, the, uh, the Google Earth engine. There we also talk about reduce and uh, um, reducing. So you have a, a multi-dimensional image and you will reduce it to one dimension or in, 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 the, in the time dimension. So it to, will go from a cube to a 2D array by using this reduced plane. How do we do it? All the, the stack you had, I want to calculate the mean, taking into account that all values zero, I don't want to calculate the mean for, they will be, be disregarded for the mean. So I will do it on this image on the gym, calculating the mean, not taking into to account the zero values. And this will give me the mean. There's one more thing I need to stress. And that is, you, there is a concept of member functions or uh, methods, we call it, and functions. And if you're familiar um, with the, with, um, uh, with programming, you will know that I what for example what you see here this is a method on the gym object I apply some function a method gym dot geometry stack plane it means on this gym I want you to do something and it will change the value of gym it will be operated on that gym itself it will not return anything. It will return a non-value. It will not return anything. 
this is most efficient for for uh, this is most memory efficient but because you will not return anything and it will in place do the things replacing the, the pixel values of gym here i want it, i want to keep my gym here my gym my original gym is lost because the values have been replaced here i want to do some maybe some later on i want to do some things extra with, with that same gym without being the pixels being well uh, changed so for each function in PyJ, you always have two options either you use you take the method where the pixel are play, replaced in place and nothing is returned and you lose the original information or you say i want the functional way of programming and i say this is my pygeo package with this module geometry i want to call this function and i want to call it as an extra argument you don't see that argument here i want my extra argument here jim you provide that jim with the same arguments here rule mean and no data but now the original gym is still in place it still exists after this line nothing is changed with the pixel values but a new gym object is returned and this is my mean if i would compare um if i would do the gym dot geometry reduce plane here before i would have exact the same in content in my gym as in the mean here but here i will keep the gym content is this more or less clear why are these two options available available especially uh, specifically for making the user um, aware of the memory footprint if you know what you're doing it can save you copies which you don't need if you always use this functional way like numpy is, is doing it similar but a bit differently normally the, the normal way of numpy is always this part in numpy is always np dot dot and it will always provide you a new function but it also has this concept of oh maybe if you're working with very large images you don't always want to copy new instances of that big image and so there's in some of those you can say copy equals false and it will do the thing in place so some of the numpy functions uh, are working like that here we do it differently we say either we we, take, we we call the method which is then in place or we call the functional way where you provide an extra par parameter here but you get a copy of the result um yes Where where do you? Uh, really I see that there's a, a keyword essentially, not a bunch. But then there's a possibility to use a function instead. Ah, okay, yeah, 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 indeed, yeah, yeah, very good point. Yes, there is, there is. I have an, I have examples uh, like a callback function yeah. would that be? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I give I have examples in um, in in the in the documentation how to use that. Yeah, good point. But it, it goes a bit more into uh, to detail than, than than here. A callback function is that is is calling a function how to do this. Um, so here you can do I, either the mean, but at some point you're limited. It's same as PK tools. You can do some things here, but if I stop programming, um, you, there's nothing more you can do. But the way to overcome that is say I am defining, I'm creating here a new function where I'm telling exactly what to do, and it will call each time it will try to reduce this, it will call that function. So it's called a callback function. Uh, here, um, ah, this what I tried here. Ah, this is um, the you were also doing the similar thing with pk tools first you, you tried it with uh the composite and then you do the pk stat uh profile yes. this is similar to the stat profile and it will and it also show you how to use this um this bridging to numpy so what is what are we doing here um we have our mask from before but 
I want this mask, which where a mask is typically zero, one value, value uh, and it was in a byte data type. I want to do some things with NumPy, and NumPy expects or is returning things. When I do things, then this is something to be careful. This is a, a price I have to pay when I'm exposing the data as a NumPy array where you can fool around with the data and maybe you can, it can be dangerous also for the, for the gym object because imagine we are, it's like we are at the, with the data, we are at the heart of the, of, the, of the object. If we are fooling around and deleting this and doing things with it that 5J or gym object doesn't know about what has been done, we might risk of doing some things uh, the, the interpreter won't like because some, some, suddenly you have, a, you have a car or you have an airplane which is a gym object and you want to do something with the engine it's fine if you change the engine and you put a new engine inside and, and, and the plane will still fly but if you remove the engine and you have the plane without the engine it will crash if you remove the plane it's no problem because the, the, everything is removed with the plane and also the engine. But here with the NumPy, we are accessing, accessing directly the engine of the plane. And if you say, um, my original gym object was a, had as, a, as an engine, a Rolls Royce or whatever, and we're changing the data type in the heart of that function. And we're saying, um, for example, I'm exposing the data as a NumPy array and NumPy, now I let NumPy exchange that data type. Now instead of bytes, it will be floating points, which has more memory. GymPy doesn't know if you don't tell it. So this is why first we say, okay, from this mask, I will convert my data into floats. Then the size of the engine is, is ready for NumPy to change the engine and to replace it. And, and put new data in it and we and we don't have we, we don't run into problems so that's why i'm converting it first to floats um i'm saying ah there's another thing when i i'm going to call here a num mean which is the same as a no, no data uh, numpy works with means and if you want numpy to say i you i want you to calculate the mean but not taking into account the zero values it works with none, none, not a number value. So in, in PyJO and PK tools, we were work, working with the no data, not with nuns, with not a number. So I need what I need to do it on, on the NumPy level, I want to say my gym object, I ex expose it as a NumPy and all the values where I had zero, but notice I'm here in the NumPy world, so I have to be in the NumPy world here as well. So this is a NumPy array, and I want to say all the values where my gym was zero or the NumPy was zero, I want to assign another number from NumPy. So here we are entirely in the NumPy world, but going directly into the heart of the PyG object and ex changing or replacing all the zero values with a NumPy num. From that moment, I can say, calculate the num mean, so the, all the mean values for the pixels without taking into account those num values and do that in the x, in the axis of the temporal domain. Because remember, my mask here um, was a, uh, I was, they're saying something wrong here before. The mask is actually a, a, also a, a cube um, because it's, it has zero values for each of the different planes in, in the temporal plane. So I take back what I said before. Um, so mask is also a data cube of floating numbers. And I'm creating the, the reduce function here by calculating the mean. And this will be my first data cube. I can create a new data cube by saying um, 
creating a new spectral band with this not a stacked plane, but creating a new data cube in the in the in the spectral domain as a, as a new band. And on that, here we have the num. I here take the numpy array of my second band. So in this at my second data, this will be my second second data cube, and I will calculate the standard deviation, but also not taking into account the num. Um, I'm sorry if this is a bit cryptic. I think at this level now, it's it's probably a bit too much, but it's just a way to reproduce what Joseph was doing before. And I'm sure that if you if we had had a bit of a more gentle way of introducing, it will all become more clear. But at this point, I realize it might be a bit uh, overwhelming. But what I want you to remember is that, first of all, have a look at the data models, how it works, how a gym object is created. You can work simply with a 2D image, you can work with a 3D image, and you can work with a list of 3D images where you just put each cube as a different band. And then you can work with these bands and these planes as you want. The only thing is, if you want to work with NumPy arrays, the NumPy array in three dimension expects everything in a data cube and you have to work with planes. If you want to work with a different cube, but in the same gym object with the same geospatial uh, geo information, you can, you can just address the second cube by addressing the another band. And you can do that by uh, take by addressing this here. By the way, if I don't put anything, it's it expect it's uh, it's supposed that it's the very first uh, cube. So it, I could also write zero here, and that would be the same. Okay, so almost almost there. Um, just uh, a way here to a uh, bit mo too much in detail, but we again here here I'm work working with this. Uh, copy is false. So I'm trying to optimize the memory fit footprint by saying replace this thing here, but replace it in line without creating any new um, copy. So it's, um, it's, 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 a, it's an optimization for the memory footprint. If you're working with relatively small images, you don't even have to care about it. If you're working with big images, this is a way how to, to, to reduce it. And then I can uh, I can show these uh, the different things of that image we have calculated. Uh, this is a bit. This is uh, I'm not going to to too much detail here, but here I want to show you how we can work with tiling. When you open an image, um, normally you would have file.jl.jim and then your file name. This would open this file, put it in Jim, okay? Reading all the pixels, the entire image into memory. I have created some options where you can say, I want this image to be tiled. I want only portion, a portion of that image to be read in memory. And you do that by using additional parameters, tile index equals zero or one of so the first tile the second tile the third tile and you see i have here uh, i give a tile index as a parameter but this could be zero for the first tile and this is the total number of tiles so suppose i want my image to be tiled in four i would say for the very first tile i would say zero four and then an overlap the overlap is Normally you would say, I want, I want no overlap, you can put zero here. But there are some functions, if you do a, um, uh, a moving window, like you have a kernel function where you want to have um, a filtering with a central element and then neighboring pixels that taking are, must be taken into account. You, if you tile the image, you will have a different result because at the end you have to do some, some tricks in order to take into account the bordering effect. So what we, we typically do is to have some by tiling, we have some overlap, some extra pixels on the side, so that at the end, when you then recombine those, they are 
fixing it, this and you don't have any bordering effects between one and the other tile. If you're just doing pixel pixel wise operations and without filtering, you can just put a zero here. Okay. <clears throat> so this will open the image by tiling and do everything from this moment, the gym will be a tiled version. And if you do another one, you go through this loop, it will do the second tile, the third tile, the third, fourth file. Yes. There's a parameter you can say you you can you can either duplicate the last pixel or or sym uh, symmetric symmetric um, duplication or so yeah you can do that but this is typically to you you will you cannot avoid you have to choose something because there there will be a border effect in the. <clears throat> And tiling the image to then later on to send it to a different CPU for final processing. So over here, is this the case, or there is some parallel processing done internally of one? Time? So we can just a big, a big image without care, taking care of yeah. the tiling. Uh, no, that, that's a good point. It's it's not that it's automatic here. What is automatic is that you can provide a number. And a total number of, of how many tiles you want, but at the end, it's um, I do I still do the, the parallel processing myself in in some kind of a uh, a bash command, or if it's in on a cluster, I let the uh, the orchestrator do do that. But I have to provide the list of the. It's not uh, it's not automatic in a way that you can provide a full image and say I want it in four four do everything in, in parallel and then we combine. It's and not yet. It's not yet. The, um, this is the way uh, Dask is working, and it, Dask is working with X-rays, and and Dask is is doing this for you. It's a it's it's a very interesting and very powerful uh, library, and um, it's maybe <clears throat> I, I can inter I can work with Dask with with uh, with X-rays as well. Um, Doing the same trick as for for NumPy, but this automatic parallel processing. Yes, is, I don't see behind the scene. No, this is not there. It it is no, that is not in here. No, no, it's a bit a bit too complicated here to do. But I I have an example. I'm not sure if I have it here. Uh, but I I tried it. This this of course this is a quite stupid thing because it's looping through and I could better do it at once. But this is just to show you yeah. how you can do it. it. Normally, what you would do is to do this in parallel. And, and let Bash then uh, uh, distribute it over the different processors you have. I, I can give you more an, an example of, of how, they, how I did it. Yeah. No. Um, okay, this is then, for example, I've, I've split it in four. Of course, it is as it is, uh, there's a bit of an overhead because it, it, from the entire image, it needs to read only one fourth. And um, it will uh, be faster if it's a small image to do it at once. So this is only valid to tile it if it doesn't fit into memory or if you want to do it in parallel processing. Here, I'm not parallel processing and it can fit in memory. So it's, it's better to do. So this is a bit stupid, it's just uh, as a showcase. So here are the four tiles of the images you see, which you then still have to recombine with a GDAL VRT, for example, and then you, have, you will have one. Uh, filtering the images, um, here it's done with PK tools. This very same here is uh, instead of PK filter, I'm using now, there's a uh, finite impulse re response filter in 2D. I have it in 1D in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the Z dimension of the cube. I can have it in 2D as done here, or I can have it in, in 3D even. Um, and here, Again, this is a very generic type of filter where I can provide the filter taps. So what are the filter taps? Is, is if you have your moving window, the taps are, is the, 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 the structuring element or they call it the kernel, which you have to multiply the different uh, pixel values and you, look and you assign the new center value of the pixel to that value. You move the window a bit and you do the same. These pixel val these, these values, of that kernel element, these are called the taps, 
and you can provide those steps. For example, with as a NumPy array, this is also nice. The NumPy array gives me a 10 by 10 window of, of, uh, of values one, and you can provide directly those steps as a NumPy array to the fil fil uh, fil filter 2D and uh, with a normalization so that you don't um, scale the image. Um, and here is your, um, your question. I want here a symmetric um, extension for the boundaries. And you can do zero or whatever uh, some of other functions you want. Um, so that can be done in the pure PyGL function using the PyGL function pure filter and showing the result here. So this is a kind of a blurred version. And also you were interested in downscaling the image. That was, that's something uh, we do here in a, in a numpy, in a, in a Pythonic way. So remember here, what is in, Py, in Python, you have the rows and the columns, and this address the rows, you say, I want from the first to the last. So I want all the, the values, but there is a third argument you can provide. And that is, the, I want only every 10th, like a striding of the, of, of, the, of the matrix. I want only every 10th element or every second element or only fifth element. And I want to do the same in, in the columns. So what, is, what this is doing is just downscaling the image by a factor of 10. So you see here, here I'm printing the, the properties, number of call and number of row of my original me is this. Then I do this resampling, yeah. print the same properties again. And you see it's divided by a number of, a factor of 10. So very intuitive way of doing a rescaling by using the NumPy notation. Sure, yeah, yeah. Sure, you can. Um, in, the, in a sense, we are doing it already because the, the, the prior step here was doing already a kind of a, a interpolation step yeah. uh, or, or an averaging step and yeah. doing it here. You can do a similar thing you, by just uh, applying. Um, I have to see what I'm. I don't think if you mean to do it in one step, I'm not sure if that is supported right now. I think what you always need to do first is to um, you to call some kind of a function. Maybe it is when it's available in NumPy, you can do it directly in NumPy. The only thing you have to be careful about if if you try to do it in place and replacing the pixel values and and PyGL doesn't know that you want to we it, it will it will be problematic here PyGL knows i'm going to rescale i'm going to resample so the, it knows about what happened if you just say i'm going to to steal the data do something in numpy and then replace it without PyGL knowing, and then also uh, resampling it then in, then you are running into danger but you can do for example you can work with copies uh, first copying it um, then doing the rescaling like this, then doing it the NumPy way, and then uh, replacing those values in that one. So there, there's, there are ways to do it. But you have to be uh, a bit careful. Okay, what do we, that's this one. Here with similar thing, but now we want the structuring element that is uh, because you also did it with a circular uh, argument in in, uh, in PK tools. Here I'm creating a new function in Python that gives me by giving a uh, providing a radius or the, 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 the dimension. It gives me an array, a NumPy array of ones in a circle and zeros outside of the circle. And I can provide that as a structure element instead of the np dot ones we had before and so we can do the exact same thing um, with calculating the mean 
providing these now as a taps, this unit circle uh, 10 as, as a taps. And it will be another version of a, of a smooth uh, image. Um, and you will see here that there's another function in PyGeo that says properties is equal. It will be true if those two images are the same. Uh, and it will be false if it's not the same. And assert is like, I want to give an error message whenever there's this one is false. So it will give an error message if the gym filter is not equals to gym. So what I've done here is um, I once I called the gym filtered. Uh, Jim filter equals Gaussian filtered. Um, what I'm doing here, Jim equals. Okay. This is my original image. I will here um, assign the values with the NumPy version of my Gaussian filtering and I assign it to Jim filtered. Then I will provide here as, as in NumPy, you can also say, I want my output not to be returned as here, but I want to, I will provide the output as an argument and I give the original gym image here so that I can save some memory that I, because the gym image I had already and I had already um, uh, reserved some memory space for of it. So I will reuse that space in memory and I will put the outcome of this caution filtering in that original gym image. So now by doing it in this way and the other way, I'm, they must be the same. So here I, I prove that they're indeed the same. Just a, a way of playing um, with the options in order to re again to reduce the memory the memory footprint. Uh, some some image statistics you can go through it uh, yourself um, as you have all done these uh, uh, PK tools already before, and I'm doing exactly the same here. This was a PK tools uh, version of it. Here I will say there is a stats. Uh, module and I will give, I will um, assign the results of the histogram and I will assign it into a variable called stats and it will be a dictionary and that dictionary has bins and, hi and histogram. The bins is the values of my histogram going from zero to the maximum value I've had, but I'm not interested in the values which were lower than zero. So they, I use the source min equals to, to zero. So this will be the bins of my histogram, histogram and this will be the values of my histogram. Similar as we, done, we have done before. In this case, they will be all be zero, but it was the, the same as for PK tools. And then um, we will um, ca again calculate the stats here for an, another image. And here again, the nice thing is of doing this all in Python is we have a, a dictionary we can provide to, uh, to matplotlib. And immediately, we are, as we are in this environment, we can immediately show, we can do things, we can play. Otherwise, in PK tools, you have to write a, uh, a file. You can open the file with GNU plot with another. Here, we have everything at, a finger, at our fingertips because we have any type of library available. So this gives you the, the histogram. Uh, image reclassification was another example you provided. So I'm doing exactly the same here. Uh, now it's called, it's, it's, it's part of the classification uh, module. So classify.reclass, you give the class, original classes and the, and the reclasses as was done before. And now <clears throat> this, um, this, will be, this will be done, um, but it can be much simpler. Because now we, we, we do it in this way. We say, everywhere I have pixel value smaller than 75, give me a zero. Everywhere where the above or equals to 75, give it a one. 
And you see that doing it in this way with the reclass or doing it in this way is exactly the same. So if I execute this, they should be true. Because they, in, in, indeed, the reclass image is the same as Jim. So this is a much easier way of going through this whole reclassification. I want this pixel to be that pixel. Here we can do it just in, in that way. The final example is the extraction of polygons. This should all see much faster now in uh, PyGeo than it was in, uh, than in PK tools. Uh, it is, this is in, uh, in PK tools, of course, because this, the images we work here are quite small. You don't see that it, it runs that, that much faster because it's also already uh, sufficiently fast. So this is the, uh, the, the PK tools version. And this one is the, uh, the PyGeo version. Um, we are extracting, so it, it's, it's not called PK extract OGR, it, now it's called just extract. We provide a vector. This is the first time now we see that we have also worked with vectors. The vector is, you can create a gym vector object instead of a gym for raster, it's a gym vector object. Exactly the same, you pro just provide the name of the vector file and you get a vector here. From that vector, um, you will extract the pixel values for a raster by overlaying this, this uh, vector over a raster and returning for that area, the mean, the standard deviation and the minimum values. And we also provide an output as a shape file with as a real data object, or we can also run it and use the GDAL uh, driver memory so that, the, that there's no file to be written and everything is kept into memory. Also the, the, the result of this extraction. So this is another way you can speed up things and, and, and not having to delete files and everything is done in memory in this case. And you can then out or convert your, your results as a dic dictionary or the, as a panda uh, object showing the values without going through the hassle of, of working with files. But of course, if you want to have the file, you can always use .io, .write, file name, and everything is written to file. So here you see it. I have my, <clears throat> uh, my extracted vector. I say I want a dictionary out of it. And I'm not exporting it directly as a pandas because there is a nice function in pandas that from a, a dictionary, it create, creates a panda. So for me, it was fine just to implement the, the export as a dictionary. And I create a pandas object by providing the dictionary as an argument of this data frame for pandas. And I have a nice uh, uh, table view of, of the results of this uh, extraction. Here the same, I extract. And uh, now, instead of just one value, I have the minimum value, the mean value, the standard deviation. Uh, I remove all the, uh, of the objects or the files. But OK, I did not, yeah, so some, some are not found. So quite a lengthy uh, demonstration. Sorry for um, keeping you so, so long from, uh, from your lunch. But I hope it was more or less clear. I realize there might be some things not very clear now because we had to run through many, many things. Um, the things I want you to remember is everything is done in memory. You can reduce the memory by working with tiles. You can use many other libraries and I encourage you to, to use those because there's so many things you can uh, there's there's many uh, I'm, uh, for example also for for you could be interesting there's nice um, uh, for uh, digital elevation models there are nice libraries that are also using numpy arrays and from the moment you hear numpy array it means that okay I can use that with just my uh, my pygeo uh, objects um, so these are the things I, I wanted to uh, to explain and I'm um, you're very welcome to to ask some some questions or if you want some 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 more things to
I'll be happy to show. Thanks, Peter. Thank yes, great for the really great uh, talk. And now uh, you see the, the similarity between the, he's trying to keep as much as possible consistent in terms of plugins. So it would be quite easy to the translation and the opening of the by array will be also easy to create to use uh, this library to create a find the table for going later on inside the neural network application and machine learning channel. So it's a, it's a good step of job processing, remain in the Python environment without doing some part of bash and then mm -hmm. inside the, and you have more flexibility like the function, like the first that I think the, the filtering, it was created in zero one simple, but then you can create whatever you want in the market. You know? Yeah, no, so, another thing I want to say, um, I, I remember there was a already, but maybe, so he, Giuseppe was saying I was developing speak tools for 20 years ago already. And I think from those 20 years, there were 19 years where Giuseppe was asking, when do you implement the random forest? <laughs> and I said, okay, I will do it, I will do it. And I tried to postpone it each time. I only had like, a, a support yeah, vector yeah. machine and a neural network, the normal neural network. I said, okay, when I will do, I will do that. It never came through. And now, thanks to this, yeah. I don't even need to anymore because as we were doing with the filtering, there's the, the sci fi uh, has a, a much more than random force. Yeah. All the, the, the classifications that are now available in, in uh, what you can do with NumPy, I have them for free. So yeah. after 20 years, Giuseppe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Any any other question? Okay, I think.